I have a couple of strategies to share with you, and they're corny a little bit, but they work, so pay attention. The first one is just to take a different route than your usual. So if you have a commute, switch it up. Don't just do what Google Maps says. Take a path that you don't usually take. The second tip is to do whatever it is that you usually do, but just dial it down to half speed. So if you usually rush through making yourself scrambled eggs in the morning, do it mindfully, take a moment, feel the weight of the egg in your hand, hear the crack as it hits the bowl, feel like the muscle tension as you whisk the egg. You get where I'm going with this, just slow it down. When you're starting with a prompt today I noticed, you don't necessarily have to be noticing something visual. You don't even necessarily have to be noticing something outside yourself. Those are the most obvious things to notice, of course, but you can also notice a feeling. One of the easiest ways to get in touch with what's going on internally in either of those ways is just to sit still. So pick somewhere decently comfortable, close your eyes, and notice what's going on in your body and in your mind. So you don't have to go all method acting with this one and actually go out and buy a guidebook, but what you could do is get into the mindset of being a tourist wherever it is that you live. And that might actually change what you plan to do with your day. On your lunch break, go to a museum because it's something that a tourist would do. Or you could even just notice a plaque that you pass every day but never read that means that something in your town is a historical monument. Um, the fifth tip is to consciously decide that you are going to pick something to notice that is not something that you see. So you should choose in advance one of your other senses to focus on. You can pick smell, taste, touch, hearing. Number six, you don't have to have some hermetic experience of noticing that's just like you wandering around smelling the air and meditating. You can also notice something that's going on in your relationships. You can notice how someone else is feeling. That's probably a good idea, actually, like to see if you can get a little bit below the surface of how you customarily interact with anyone else in your life and remember something that they said or something that they did or a way that they looked and how it made you feel and how you imagined that they felt. That is a totally legitimate thing to notice. In the writing, especially the first person writing that I admire, there's a lot of detail. The thing that makes someone an artist, the thing that can make anyone an artist is consciously deciding to take a moment and record the thoughts and feelings that stem from any ordinary moment or encounter or endeavor. So this is an experiment that I do at conferences and at the bar and kind of anywhere in between. And so it's called Camera Roulette. And from the name you might be able to gather, we're gonna go through your photo roll and ask you to scroll at random through your phone select a random photo, not a picked or curated photo, but truly the one that you land at randomly. And then I'm gonna ask you to just to talk about it and describe it and what it, what is it that we're seeing. Can you find a unique story thread? This is a really fun game to play with a partner. If you, if you have other people around or if you wanna bring it to the bar, really try to honor where you naturally end up without feeling the need to change it because it's not cool enough or good enough. Um, and maybe it's embarrassing, maybe it's uh, something that goes in a totally different direction. That's okay too, I'd say just run with it and see what happens. So I'm just gonna go and then uh, I'll stop and then I should have a photo up. All right, this is a photo of a photo. Off the bat, I immediately have judgment that like this isn't an interesting photo, this is kind of boring. But if I think about it, this was the first shoot I ever did before I got into filmmaking and I didn't really know like where that would lead me. Um, and since then I've made a, a ton more films. So I guess for me here, it's, it's less about this surfer 
and the sunshine and more about, I guess like a, a story of humble beginnings. All right, so one more here, camera roulette. Here's a photo. And looks like it's a sunrise in San Francisco. So I started looking at sunrises after uh, having a bad LSD trip on Halloween three years ago. I couldn't sleep and so finally at 4.30 a.m. I went to the roof of where I was living and just looked out and had this like incredible experience where everything was well in the world and it was sunrise and I promised myself from now on I'm gonna wake up early and watch the sunrise as often as I can. And so that's likely what inspired this photo that we see here. And so I, I guess when you're looking at your own photos, I would just encourage you to think, to not shy away from it, but just lean into it and like, what is the, the insight there? Um, even if it is a little vulnerable and means you're revealing something more than you planned on doing. I need you to list five people in your life that you do not like. It can be from any phase of your life. So it can be someone from your current life. It can be someone from a couple years ago. It can be someone from when you were a kid. And it can be their name if you remember their name. But even if you don't remember their name and you just remember that kid in second grade who always like threw the pencils at you, you can just write down that kid in second grade who threw the pencils at me. Also know that no one is gonna see this list but you. So just be honest, do it, and just do it now. First five people the spring to mind that you do not like. All right, have you got your five people? Well, even if you don't, we're gonna keep going. So, you've hopefully got at least more than one, and what I want you to do is look at that list, and whichever one of those names is just like flashing at you, you're like, oh yeah, them. That's your person, so circle that name, and we are ready to move on to the next part. So. If you've got paper, blank piece of paper. If you're working on a screen, new fresh screen. And here's the situation. You are walking into a coffee shop and you're walking to the counter, you're gonna get your thing. And you noticed sitting in the corner of the coffee shop, maybe eating a bagel, eating a muffin, reading a book, drinking a coffee, is that person, the one that you just circled, the one that you do not like. So you're gonna spend about eight minutes right now writing from your perspective, I am, as you walk into the coffee shop, get your stuff and you see that person. So what are you doing? What are you thinking? What are you seeing as you're walking in the shop and seeing that person in the corner? You've got eight minutes, go for it. So you did that first part. Excellent. You spent eight minutes writing about the experience of walking into that coffee shop, seeing that person in the corner. Now, fresh piece of paper, newly blank screen, you are now that person. That person in the corner who you don't like, you are now them, okay? You are being that person and you see yourself walk into the coffee shop, doing the whole ordering thing, getting the coffee. I now want you to spend eight minutes, again, first person, which is to say, I am, writing from the perspective of the person you do not like seeing you walk into the coffee shop. So that person's thoughts, that person's feelings, that person's actions, as they see you, you've got eight minutes. Don't think about it, just start writing and go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.